Welcome to the Alltech Radio podcast once again on YouTube. This is where you learn about the news and technology related to working in the world of IT. No matter what your job is in IT, we cover all aspects of work, life, balance, job duties, salary, and everything else related to computers and technology. I'm your host, Professor Robert McMillan. Along with me is my co-host, IT consultant, Scott Portinga. And welcome once again to our YouTube podcast, Scott. Good afternoon, Robert. How are we doing? I Stand am cool. doing well. I'm just trying to make some uh, educational videos today and having some challenges, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I will figure it out. Uh, so one of the big news stories for last week, but I don't know if everybody's heard it yet, is that Azure Active Directory is now going to be called Microsoft, no, it's going to be Azure Entra ID. Have you heard about this? Uh, just... You know, what I saw when I logged in last night, I haven't dug into it deeply. Is it just a renaming or are they changing some functionality in it? Well, I went ahead and did a video on this because I figured a lot of people would have the same question. And um, so when you look at the two different portals, if you go to portal.azure.com and then click on the Active Directory, Azure Active Directory button, then, you know, you see what you've been seeing for the last, what, seven, eight years. Um, if you click on entra.microsoft.com and use the same credentials, um, you're going to see the same users, the same groups. Everything's going to, you know, basically be the same. However, you're going to also see um, on the left-hand side of the screen, as per my demo video, just go to techpublishing.com and you can see the video uh, you know, that was done uh, recently here. Uh, and it, it basically organizes the menus different. So they could have easily just continued calling it Azure Active Directory instead of Entra, but for some weird reason, uh, they renamed it on top of it. So the, yeah. the website is absolutely better. It's better organized. Um, you know, it doesn't have one long stream of links anymore. Um, it has, yeah. you know, organized sub menus uh, and it allows them to add additional menus if they'd like without, you know, making it you know, an even longer stream of links. Uh, but for some reason, like I said, they had to rename it. <laughs> Marketing people said, no, no, we need to distance ourselves. It's just something new. Yeah, new and exciting. Uh, so, so uh, you know, I got a, uh, an email from LinkedIn Learning and they said, uh, I assume you heard the news. I emailed them back, said, yes, I did. And they said, hey, can you give us a list of, of the videos that mention Azure Active Directory so we know what <laughs> needs to be redone? And I went and I did a, a search, and it's like in the hundreds. <laughs> yeah. see. How many were there, Robert? <laughs> yes. Yes, there were so many <laughs> that uh, uh, I kept scrolling and scrolling. I'm like, oh, no, I know what I'm going to be doing the next six months. <laughs> Um, yep. Fortunately, they still have the old portal up. I think they're going to have it probably till at least the end of the year. Um, but uh, it's it's hard to say when exactly. They, um, you know, they may even come up with a date that says here's when it's going to get get cut off. They haven't done it yet, uh, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be the date. You know, um, how many times have we seen support for operating systems continue? You know, yep. <clears throat> excuse me, longer than they said they would. If we all scream loud enough, we can change their minds. <laughs> yeah, except for on this renaming thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Well, um, there's been a lot of artificial intelligence information that's come out this week. You know, it's, it's become like the big thing. We know that um, a lot of programmers and developers are starting to get laid off. We've talked about this before. Um, operations people, you know, hey, you still need somebody to get up and do stuff. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, you know, I don't see this affecting IT administrators, sysadmins like it is, you know, uh, people who do programming and things like that. But there is a lot of really interesting stuff that's come out that you may or may not have heard of. Now, do you read the the tech news every day, or is that a once a week thing for you? How often it's do you? It's probably a couple times a week, two three times. Um, I don't quite often don't have time during the day to you know spend an hour catching up on everything. So got that day job or out there you know taking yeah, care of customers. Yeah, taking too much time. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, OpenAI, you know, which is the one that puts out the chat GPT, they've got three, 3.5 and version four. For version four has been the one where you pay the $20 a month 
Um, you, you can do like a few search or, or you know, questions uh, before they start charging you. I think I got two questions in before it said I, I reached my max for the month. <laughs> <laughs> so I waited a month. I went back in the next month in July and it said, oh, sorry, you've already reached your maximum. And I, I was like, I didn't type this year. <laughs> Uh, so Stanford did an interesting um, review of uh, ChatGPT 3 and 4, and they said, you know, because a lot of people have been saying it's been getting dumber, you know, uh, o- over mm-hmm. time. And, uh, you know, part of that reason you might think it's getting dumber is because they're, they are basically removing things like legal answers, health answers, you know, things like that yep. just for liability reasons. But now they're also getting dumber <laughs> so so stanford did a did a uh, research project on this and then uh basically found that every couple of days the responses get worse and worse and worse to the same questions um so you know people are not imagining this but then another a twist on this story is that a couple of days later the stanford um I don't know. What do you call the head of a college? Not the dean, but president, I guess. Yeah. President. Uh, yeah. So the the yeah the president or the head of Stanford Stanford University stepped down due to some document, and I don't think it's the Chat GPT one, but I could be wrong. But some document that, that the research wasn't done properly, and the you know this the maybe they call him a chancellor. I don't know. Uh, and this person didn't properly review it, and, and it went out. So um, you know, yeah, yeah. So this this person and went ahead and, and resigned. So I don't think it was related to this chat GPT thing, but uh, people have been complaining that it's getting dumber all the time. Have you used it at all? You know, I have not have not tried to do that. I'm thinking about using it for doing scripting Yeah. Um, to get some good information on scripting. But as far as day-to-day use with what I do, I just, I just don't see the application. Yeah, I did an advanced uh, PowerShell course for Active Directory, and I thought, oh, why not? Let's just see what it says. So I, you know, I was going to, you know, make videos for this course, and uh, so I said, hey, show me an advanced PowerShell commandlet for creating a new user. Uh, let's see what you got. And it came back, and it was all wrong. <laughs> I mean, it gave me commandlets that didn't exist. It gave me switching options that you know it didn't exist. I mean, it was it just made it up completely. <laughs> well, if it's if it's feeding up information on the web, you know, I've gone through and you've done a Google search on a topic, and you know, I want to know how to do this, and you know, prop, sometimes the first three, four, or five you try are wrong. They yeah, don't that's work. true. That's true. Uh, now, Bard, se- Bard seems to be doing better. So Bard is Google's version of AI. Uh, so you can go to bard.google.com if you want to try it out. And there's no limit to the amount you type in. There's, you know, it's up to date. Uh, you know, it's, it seems to be doing pretty well. So um, you can check that out and, you know, type in questions and, and see, see if it comes out with any better. Um, it seemed to do a little better for me for the, the PowerShell commandlets I was trying to test out, uh, but it still wasn't 100% accurate. I mean, the best thing to do is to um, find the proper commands, find the proper switches and test them. And then you can actually start using them. <laughs> yep. So uh, that's why I had to end up doing it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think with a lot of the AI stuff, you the search results to get out there, you know, go back to Reagan, you know, trust but verify. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, all right, so OpenAI GPT-4 uh, used to cap uh, people at like 20 responses and now, it, or questions, whatever, and now it's going up to 50 for some users and 100 for others. Um, so they are opening it up a little bit. But uh, I, so there has been some speculation on why it is that the answers are getting worse. And it, it, may, ha- it may come down to electricity. So um, OpenAI is not making money yet, even though Microsoft has invested like $10 billion into it or some crazy thing. <laughs> and it's because the electricity costs so much. So what mm. some people have been speculating on, and I don't know if this is true or not, or if it's just speculation, is that they have been throttling the amount of electricity uh, that the servers can use. So basically like removing processors, removing you know GPUs, you know all those kinds of things. So it's not using as much electricity. And ah. because of that, it's, it's, it's basically like, like like taking away brain cells. It's it's like you going on a bender this weekend and then trying to, you know, manage a server. It's just, you know. 
<laughs> it could be done, but not could well. Be done, but most likely, you'll do more damage than good. <laughs> yep. But I know you You're don't better do better off not. I know you know you're a teetotaler. You're not into that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. So, yes, me too. I'm always the designated driver. I am very boring. But you know what? I I don't wake up sick in the morning. <laughs> I you don't. Know, that's that's a big plus. <laughs> yeah, I don't have regrets. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Don't have to worry about any texting that you did overnight. And, uh... Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. That is a good point. Um. Let's see what else is going on in AI that's uh, interesting here. I've got uh, several different fun things. Uh, open AI credentials stolen by thousands for sale on the dark web. Uh -oh. <laughs> so uh, there are a lot of different AI programs out there, and most of them are free. So I guarantee you that security is not the highest thing on the list. Uh, they're just trying to get people to sign up. If enough people sign up, then companies like Microsoft or Google will come in and buy them, and then you know they'll make millions of dollars. So that's really what why we have you know all of a sudden a hundred plus AI websites, and yep. why most of them are free. Uh, there's dare to get it out there, try to be seen, and uh, hope you can sell. Yeah, hope you can sell within a few years or less or months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I remember that uh, OpenAI did not have initially the ability to generate uh, pictures from text. Like you know, say you know, draw me a picture of this. Well, it didn't. It couldn't do that in the beginning, but now it can. So either their own internal people did this, or maybe they went and they bought up a small company that knows how to. do I don't know. Uh, either way, though, I thought that it was kind of interesting that. Um, that is now a new feature that it has. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, you know, there's some people are going into the dark web and uh, selling, you know, your information. So it's a good time, a good, good. Um, well, yeah, so there's, there's a website called Have I Been Owned? Have you, have you heard of this one? I have. Yeah. So you go in there, you put in your email address and find out if you've been, you know, owned in any way and it goes to the dark web. D did you find that you were owned mm -hmm. in any way? I found a few because, you know, accounts that I've, you know, systems that I've had accounts with have been hacked, but I look at it and I look at the password that it presents and it's like, yeah, I changed that a long time ago. Exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't really have any information. Right. Uh, let's see the, let's see if it, if it mentions the name. This is from uh, bleepingcomputer.com. It's a really good website for getting uh, good information. I uh, don't, yeah, I don't see the particular, oh, I guess it was ChatGPT. Okay. ChatGPT was the one. Uh, they stole more than 100,000 accounts. Uh, well, you know, everybody in Oregon has had their accounts stolen, so it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> exactly. It's going to happen, no matter or when. Yeah, everybody at the DMV, uh, well, every driver, you know, basically has got, had their right. information stolen. <laughs> um, Apple is uh, making their own artificial intelligence. Apparently, oh, Siri's not doing that great, you know. <laughs> You use Siri at all? Uh, at times, but I haven't really gotten into the habit of using it. I probably should. If it worked well every time, that'd be one thing. But it's like sometimes it's more trouble than it's worth. So. Well, you know, the, currently, and and this is also true of Microsoft's Cortana, uh, they didn't use artificial intelligence to create a response. Um, you know, so basically artificial intelligence is, is going to take all the information that it's gathered in its lifetime, just like we do all the time. And it's going to take that information and create a response based on that information. What Cortana and Siri have been doing is just going out to the most popular websites where people have asked that question and have had a favorable response. <laughs> uh, you know, so that, that's not going to be as accurate. <laughs> oh, this must be the right answer. Here you go. Exactly. So uh, Apple shot up by a market value of $71 billion after news that it is secretly building an Apple GPT uh, to rival yeah. OpenAI, which is the one that Microsoft invested in. Uh, yeah, so I, 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 you know, I don't think Apple's going to get rid of Siri. I think they're just going to turn it into an, a real AI rather than, you know, get rid of it. Microsoft, you know, Microsoft is an interesting company. Uh, so if something doesn't work, they just cut it off like a body part, you know, they <laughs> kick that yeah. thing to the curb. And Google does the same thing. You know, they just kick it to the curb and it's like, that didn't work. Let's try something else. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. care how many, well, how much money I invested in this. 
But what's frustrating with us users is that they, you know, it's like with the uh, Microsoft phones. We are committed to those. We are going to see it through. We're going to make sure it's a success. Oh, no, we're done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> yeah, we get used to it. We learn it. We learn how it works. Yeah. And and then you do something like that. that. That kind of stuff makes us a little bit crazy. Um, I remember you ranting and raving about that when they killed the Microsoft phone. Oh, yeah. How many? I have so many of these phones. Good news is. Um, these phones are now collector's items. Um, so all I need to do is to charge them up. And in some case, I'll have to replace the battery because, you know, if you don't keep them charged, those batteries go bad. Um, yep. So charge them up, clear the information and sell them. Uh, so yep. I know the, the iPhone 4s that we used to have at the office years ago, uh, those are going for $400 now. Oof. Yeah. You still have yours? I'll bet I you do. do. <laughs> I still have an iPhone 3 somewhere, I think. One of the little Ooh. oval shaped ones. Yeah, for some reason, the iPhone 3s somewhere. aren't worth as much uh, unless they're a specific model. Uh, but mm -hmm. the iPhone 4s, for some reason, I don't know why, but um, they are worth more. Now, they did have hmm. an iPhone 1, uh, which was the original 4 gigabyte model. Uh, apparently it didn't sell very well, so then they upped it to eight gigabytes. Well, somebody had the forethought to purchase the four gigabyte model and never open it. <laughs> <laughs> and it sold, I think it was $175,000, something like that. Ooh. I think it was yesterday. Previously, wow. someone had, had purchased one for just under 100000 So they didn't expect it to go for that much. But yeah, somebody spent you know about $175,000. Uh, and um, had yeah. to complete the, their uh, collection. Yeah, the smart thing to do is to, you know, buy one and just let it sit there and so they, never use it. Yeah, and the guy said, yeah, they never use it. The guy bought it said he was never going to open it because if he did, it wouldn't be worth as much. Well, how do you know what's in it? <laughs> <laughs> how do you know it even works? Yeah, you might have to get like an x-ray of some, or something. You know? Yeah, what, what's, what's in the box? Is it really what you think it is? Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe the battery blew up inside it you know what i mean <laughs> it's just get, you know spattered across the inside of the box yeah yeah so whoever gets that is going to be someday they're going to open that thing you know like a time capsule and you know. all right you break it you bought it <laughs> that's right uh there's a new company out there called cerebrus i don't know if you're heard of, at least i think it's it's uh cerebrus yeah c-e-r-e-b-r-a-s uh sounds like that's how you'd say it um, so they are selling the, com the supercomputers to host artificial intelligence. So this is a new twist on this. I mean, before anybody who had an AI w were building their own hardware, right? You know, they were, um, mm -hmm. you know, clustering together multiple different, probably Linux servers, just because it's a lot cheaper and, and they have more capability oh, yeah. for clustering than Windows does. Uh, I mean, not that Windows cluster isn't bad, but it's, it's usually good for specific things like file sharing and DHCP and you know, stuff like right. that. It's not, high, it, high performance, you're going to get more with uh, Linux clusters. Exactly. Or Unix. You know, Unix has this kind of capability, too. Um, yep. So Cerebrus uh, is coming out with these AI supercomputers. I mean, real supercomputers, not the, not the ones we used to see in the Apple ads where they had uh, a, a Mac a Macintosh with a whole bunch of attack dogs around them. Remember that? <laughs> yep. Yeah, and they said, this is a supercomputer, according to the U.S. government. Uh, no, this is a real supercomputer. <laughs> and I think it's going for, oh, yeah, uh, over $100 million. So Ooh. you can buy over $100 million and get the Cerebrus CS2 uh, with AI accelerators. And apparently they sold one to Abu Dhabi. Uh, they sold one to them. I don't know what they're going to do. Probably make their own AI, I guess. Uh, oh, the total cost with all the extras, the service. You know, 100 million is just the down payment, Scott. Uh, all, all, oh, you yeah. want it installed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 900 million dollars. Oh, and more than that, excess of 900 million dollars. Yeah. I would have done it for 750. <laughs> You always get me with those those zingers there. Um, yeah, so that's that is the um, the new big big money. At least it's a, a U.S. based one. You know, I'm sure they're all all the parts were made in China, but you know they're putting it together oh, in yeah. the U.S. <laughs> so um, U.S. assemblers. Yes. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. Uh, speaking of Apple, again, I, Apple is making iPhone users switch back to Apple Maps from Google Maps. 
Um, and, you know, I don't know if you remember about five, six years ago, maybe it was longer than that, but Apple made a change to their Maps program and a lot of people just abandoned it. Yep, it was bad. Um, so did you switch over to Google from that? I know you're on an iPhone. I'm not. I'm on Android. But... I've I've always used Google Maps. Um, I have not gone through. There is a there is a way that you could have gone through and said, yep, you know, get rid of Apple Maps and always use Google Maps for anything. If I say, show me where this is, it'll use Google Maps. And I never bothered to go through and make the change necessary to make that happen. So now it sounds like I uh, didn't waste my time because it's taken away. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Google Maps is the default mapping app on the iPhone and iPad because Apple Maps was so bad, even Apple realized that it was terrible. And so they just went ahead and put the default to, to Google. Um, but now people are saying that the Apple one is so much better uh, that people are going to switch back. Now, you can manually go in and specify which mapping program you want. Um, but, uh, you know, by default, it was set to Google. So they have uh, the new new changes. They have this better design, clear public transit direction. That's helpful. Faster routes, okay. better management of unpredictability of subway outages, uh, better than Google Maps, even according to this uh, reviewer. Uh, so, yeah, people are are starting to make the switch. I'm fine with Google Maps. I mean, there's some things I don't like about it. So, you know, cars nowadays are, you know, unless you buy the highest, highest, highest end, you can, you don't come with a built-in satellite anymore. Uh, you know, so, you know, the car before I have, the one I have now, which is a Honda CRV, I bought a Subaru um, Crosstrek. You remember that, in, you know, back in those <laughs> days. And, yep. uh, you know, it came with a built-in satellite. Uh, system for GPS, which was great, except for it didn't update. You know, you had to go in and download an expensive update. So then car manufacturers said, okay, fine, we won't put that in anymore unless you buy the highest end deal. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let you choose either the iPhone one or the, you know, Android Google Maps one uh, you know, or Android. Yeah. Uh, what do they call it? And, it's Android, uh, I forget what it is, but uh, there's a special name for the Android car one. Yep. And so... Uh, when my, my my wife you know gets into my car and plugs it in, then she gets the Apple one because that's what she has. And when I go, you know, then I get the Google one. So you it'll switch back and forth. It's not like you have to pick oh, okay. one or the other. You know, you can you can do that. Um, so, but the problem is, is if you don't like some of the things about you know the map that you're using, then you're you're kind of stuck with it. Uh, you don't really have the satellite you know option. So for instance, like uh, I can't get consistently. Uh, Google Maps to show what the speed limit is. So I don't know if I'm speeding or not, because, you know, there's not that many signs up on some of these roads. Mm -hmm. uh, super annoying. So I'm like, am I about to get pulled over? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> um, yep, keep your eye on that rearview mirror. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so you know, there, and there's some other things I just don't like about it. So I ended up having to buy um, a separate GPS to plug into my car that sits in one of the you know the drink holders um mm -hmm. you know because uh not only you know do i have problems not knowing what speed limit you know certain times i mean there are ways to get it in there it's just not consistent uh, right. but uh, whereas the gps one shows it all the time uh but the other problem is is that if you don't if you're not near a cell phone tower then the ma the map just goes blank uh okay. yeah yeah and you're like where am i <laughs> i'm driving down the road i have no idea where i am anymore um, so the, that's because, you know, it gets its information from the cell tower, whereas GPS is get it from the sky, you know, way yeah, up mine, there. I have a, uh, a DVD in mind that with the map programs in it. Yeah. It's a 2010 Prius, so it just runs off the, the disc with the built-in GPS. The DVD, wow, I haven't seen one of those DVD ones in a long time. Yeah. And do you just get a new DVD if you want to update it, or do they not make them? I don't know. I have not uh, gone through and updated that or even I don't really use it all that much. I usually just use my phone. OK, but uh, it, it is handy to have. And I probably ought to look and see if there's an updated one in there. Yeah. yeah available. Now, when when we had the mic, the uh, Microsoft phones made by Nokia, uh, what was great about that is their their maps programs were GPS. So every phone had a built in GPS into it. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to worry about, you know, being too far away from whatever, you know, from from a, a cell tower or whatever. Um, you were always connected as long as you could see the southern sky, you know, because that's yep. where all the uh, that's where all the satellites are. Is, so it gets maximum amount of coverage. 
deep canyons were a problem. Yeah. How, how many deep canyons you go in this guy? Oh, Eastern, Eastern Oregon, Oregon. got some canyons. Oh yeah, there. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. I, it just you know that reminded me of you know this terrible heat that we've been having, and some mm-hmm. people are going into Death Valley, and dying because <laughs> they want to experience the 150 degrees or whatever it is. But they want to experience death. death. Yeah, they they want to experience the hottest place on Earth so they can you know have a, a selfie you know done on yep. for Instagram or whatever. And say, look at me, I've survived the, you know, hot. Oh, no, you didn't. Or not. <laughs> you did not survive. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, always terrible, terrible stories about parents leaving their kids in the car and, you know, all oh, that kind yep. of stuff. I have to admit, you know, I've gotten out of the car and taken two or three steps before I'm like, oh, yeah, kids in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three <laughs> steps. Never have I gone into a store or a building and been like, "Oh wow, I totally forgot my kid was in there." Um, yeah. So I mean, you don't get yeah. that far. Yeah. What are, what is going on in your mind, or not going yeah. on in your mind to leave your kid in the car? You know, baking yeah. away. I mean, yes. remember you have kids and they're with you. Yeah. Yes, remember that. Now, my kids are all grown. They all made it, you know. So. Yep, they all survived. So, so if I leave them in the car, they can get out on their own. That's right. Point. Their fault, not your fault. That's right. Come on. Saw some, saw some story about an airplane. Uh, it was a jet that was on the tarmac for hours, 110 yeah, degrees. Yeah. People getting sick, people throwing up. Yeah, now, now that had been going on a lot in previous years. And so the government passed some rules that, you know, if it goes over a certain temperature or if you're just stuck on the tarmac, you have to give snacks and drinks. Every, I think it's like on the hour. Um, mm-hmm. And then if it's over three hours, you have to go back in. Um, so I think th- in this case, the only reason they went back in was because somebody got sick. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I think they might still be out there now. I, I, I wouldn't want to <laughs> yeah. go in that plane at this point. But, uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, it, was, it, it seemed really bad. I would not want to be on that flight. How, have you ever been stuck on, on a plane for a long time waiting to, to uh, take off? Define a long time. Uh, there was one, I think it was like an hour, hour and a half. That is a long time. I was yeah. thinking more than five minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm getting in line from those big airports, you know, getting in line for takeoff at JFK. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you're, you are moving slightly. And so you're not stuck on the tarmac. You're just in line behind 30 other planes. Yeah. Well, we had one. This uh, I was in Chicago last week. And we had one um, trying to fly back from Chicago to Portland where uh, something had fallen off a plane and it was on the tarmac. And so nobody could take off because they couldn't roll over the thing. They didn't know what it was. You know, it could have been a suitcase, part of it. Oh, eventually they they did announce. They said that it was part of a tire. So uh, somebody took off with part of their tire missing. But I I haven't heard about any crashes or anything. So, you know, fortunately it has a happy ending. But um, unless somebody's keeping something from us. But, yeah, it was part of a tire that had fallen off. <laughs> speaking of speaking of flights, I downloaded an app last week called Flight Radar 24. Have you ever seen this one? No. What's what's that about? It shows every plane in the sky. Wow. And you can tap on the plane. It'll tell you, you know, what the what the plane is. So here's a plane at uh, PDX going LAX to PDX. Oh, this is just coming in, apparently. LAX to PDX. It is a Boeing 747-467F. Um, wow. It's, it's barometric altitude is zero right now, so it is on the ground. Okay. Arrived four minutes ago. But it's interesting. You can see planes that are, you know, that are in flight. You know, oh, we heard some chopper go on. Oh, check the app. Oh, it's over there at the hospital. It's life flight. Oh, it's choppers too. You. Oh, wow. It, it'll list choppers. It'll list planes. It'll list everything. Wow. That and sounds like the app of the week. What's it called? Flight Radar 24. And it has to be free, because otherwise you wouldn't have gotten it. Exactly. (laughs) It is free. (laughs) There's a paid version. They keep saying, oh, you should get the paid version. I assume that there's like a little ad at the bottom. There's a little ab along the ab along the top right. Oh, the top. Oh, okay. Financing for up to 84 months. All right. Hey, show it, show it to us. Flip, flip the phone around. Let's let's see this thing. Oh uh, yeah, we can't see. It we can't is. see that. Uh, it's not going <laughs> to. We can't see that. All right. <laughs> it, it washes it's all, out. It's like a big white um, screen. <laughs> but what's what's interesting though is when you zoom out. Yeah. You can see everything. It seems like that would be a violation of privacy, don't you think? But these are all. It's all public information. Yeah, you. If you're a terrorist, yeah, I know where that plane is. I know where it's going. I know when it's going to land. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Wow. Yeah, it's, yeah, out, it's there. out there. I'll bet it's people like who like uh, like to you know spy or track or what, what's it called you know when somebody does that to somebody else a creeper. <laughs> creeper. <laughs> yep. Anyway, yeah, it's. Yeah, uh, I'll, bet, it's I'll bet they already know about this thing. <laughs> oh yeah, they've probably got the better version too. They got the paid version. Yeah. But yeah, the, the amount of planes going across the uh, Pacific, it's it's incredible. The amount of planes in the air. Uh, yeah. It's all wow. Washed out. Wow. Um, anyway, anyway, yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, we're, taking we're taking way too many flights. flights. That reminds me of a Will and Grace episode where, um, uh, Jack, you know, he, he liked to spy on Kevin Bacon and uh, strange enough, Jack w went to high school, I went, went to high school, you know, the same high school I did, like a he was a couple of years behind me. Um, so, uh, but he was always, a, a, he, I'll tell you how, how goofy this kid was in, uh, as a freshman, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, he was, uh, spying on Kevin Bacon. I guess he was, you know, uh, I, what is that term when you do that to somebody? I forget what the term is. Anyway, uh, he was spying on Kevin. Stalking. Bacon. Stalking. Yes, that's it. Cause yeah. spying, you know, stalking Kevin Bacon, you know, uh, wherever he went and he was you know, like hiding in the bushes. And, uh, one day he's looking up and he's got his binoculars and looking up and Kevin Bacon walks right Right up next to him like what are you seeing what are you looking at <laughs> <laughs> looking to see if you're in the house there that's yeah that's what this uh application seems to remind me of but uh you know <laughs> uh yeah. let's, but thanks for sharing that's uh that's pretty cool i can't wait to see what free app you've downloaded next week I'll, I'll come up with something. You know, I, I downloaded some some games you know for uh the flight and um you know, also I have, um, you know, I got the, the Bluetooth phone so I can watch Netflix and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But a lot of these free games, after every little thing you do and a 30 second ad pops up, I can't take that. You know, now yep. I could turn off my cell and turn off my Wi-Fi and play and the ads won't show up because they can't communicate with it uh, and, mm -hmm. and they're designed to still work. Um, but then I won't get any texts. I won't get any emails. I won't get any phone calls. And then again, that's not right. a bad thing, but, uh, and you know, if it's a, during the work day, then, you know, that's not necessarily a good thing. So, but then again, maybe I shouldn't be playing games during the work day. I don't know, Scott, you know, well, it depends on what your boss says. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. <laughs> What's written into the company policy <laughs> I'll have to find out what my <laughs> wife says, um, exactly. galaxy watches are getting the Samsung wallet and something called a thermo check. And WhatsApp apps, you know, WhatsApp, it's, it seems to be the application that just never dies. <clears throat> yep. It's, it's uh, WhatsApp seems to be more popular in other countries, but I believe people use it for texting. Um, but it's not that popular in the U.S. But, it, you know, Samsung saying, hey, the new watch is going to come with that in it. Um, and it's going to come with this uh, thermo check. Uh, which I'm not even sure what that is yet, but it's going to be also allow you to do uh, credit cards. But, you know, the buttons and the controls in this thing are so small that, uh, you know, those of us over 40, unless we have our readers on. <laughs> you, yeah, you know what I'm talking I, about. I, like I think you're wearing them right now. On the screen. <clears throat> um, yeah, unless you have those on and you're like, oh, what? What time is it? And you, all of a sudden you like book a flight to, you know, Cuba or something because you, you <laughs> yeah. were trying to look at the time. But because it's connected to your credit card and you can now make airline reservations using your mm -hmm. smartphone, you know, uh, you now have a serious problem. Uh, so I, I'm, you know, I've not purchased a smartwatch. You have one, right? Yeah, yeah I've got an old Apple, you got an old Apple, uh, one. Apple yeah. watch. Uh, the I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that the updates still work because that's one of the things I hate about I would hate about buying a watch is for Apple or Samsung or whatever to say, sorry, but your, your, your watch is no longer going to work because we can't update it or it can't get the latest security thing. So now it's a security risk. Yeah. Um, yeah at, at some point that will happen to mine. I think I've got maybe another, another update or two to, to go, but at, past that, they're not going to support it anymore. Well, how old is the watch now? It's a series three. I don't know how old they and they have, and they have series eight. Oh my, right now. oh my. So, now the, the newer ones are nice they have they can take your uh, blood pressure okay they can they can check um, different health as aspects so yeah i wouldn't mind having a newer one but this one still you know it counts steps it takes my heart you know, oh, okay. doing all that okay. kind of stuff so still works fine all right well one of the cool things about this galaxy watch i think you're really gonna wish you had was first off it's waterproof i don't know is the is the iphone watch uh, waterproof 
it, it is. You have to put it in waterproof mode, though. <laughs> If you forget to do that, is that is that void the warranty? <laughs> like, I really probably void voids the watch. watch. Void the void. Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, go, go go swimming with it. I mean, you can't swim with it, but you have to kill it. Can it kind of well? What does it do? Things up. It uh, oh, it locks down the uh, anything open. So you have no idea either. <laughs> yeah. All I know is if I, if I scroll up here, okay. there's a little water droplet, and I click on that, yeah. and it says. Bing, bing. But it doesn't look any different to you once it's enabled, right? No, oh, there's just okay. well, there's the little water droplet thing at the top of the oh, screen right, telling right. me that it, is, it's that's in funny. waterproof mode. You, you put it in this mode, but it doesn't actually give any visible difference other than the water droplet. It, exactly. <laughs> that's crazy. Exactly. It doesn't really change any functionality of what it does, so I don't know why it can't be in that mode all the time. Let's ask ChatGPT. Uh, so Galaxy Watch 6 has this thermo, you know, feature, but what does that mean? So Hyundai Elantra, here, here's, what it, here's what it means. Look what a okay. And it, what this thermo check does is it will um, check the, the temperature of the user's surroundings. Okay, so if you're like, oh, I'm, I'm walking into a room, I feel cold. Is it me or you know, am, I getting, am I getting sick or is, is it really cold in this room? So you can look at your watch and it'll tell you what the temperature is. Okay, that's, that's handy. Uh, it can tell you the temperature of the water you're going to swim in. So you can take your, your you know, watch that's attached to your hand or whatever, dip it into the water, pull it up, and, and it'll tell you what the, the water temperature is. Yeah. That's kind of cool if you're, a, yep. if you're a swimmer. I'm not a big swimmer anymore. You know, when I was a kid, I liked doing it, but now it's, I, just, I just don't like it as much. But um, yeah. this is the one that's really cool. It will uh, measure the heat of the food you're about to eat. Oh, yeah. See, I told you you'd get jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. You go to a restaurant or maybe you microwave something that's not already pre-cooked and you can find out if this thing is hot enough, you know, to to use without getting sick. So like how what, 165 yeah. degrees? Is that the is that the one? Yep, that's that's the number that comes to mind. Yeah. Uh, so you just point your watch, you know, the, the sensor, you know, at, at the, uh, the food and then you push the uh -huh. button and then it tells you uh, what the temperature is. Huh. huh. Yeah, I've got one of those little laser temperature things. So, yeah, no reason you couldn't build that into a phone. Yeah. I had those. Uh, I had one of those as well. I think they were they were a, a big sale on Black Friday a couple of years back, and so my wife mm -hmm. bought me one because sometimes you know the servers get hot and you're not sure if they're you know not being properly air cooled or whatever, um, and they they just never. Maybe it was because it was a Black Friday one and it was super cheap. It just never gave the an accurate uh, temperature at all, ever. <laughs> really? Yeah, mine, mine works pretty well, and I've used it just for that reason. You know, going into server rooms, checking, you know, what's the AC level in it, are the servers overheating, you know, things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it works well. So you probably didn't get it on a Black Friday deal is what you're saying. I probably did, because I probably wouldn't pay full price for it. <laughs> well, maybe you just got lucky. <laughs> I just chose a good brand. Yeah, maybe you did. <laughs> Uh, satellites, another area of cybersecurity that people can, you know, start specializing in because satellites are years behind on cybersecurity. This is according to, uh, according to Gizmodo, another great uh, news site. Uh, so researchers, researchers discovered six different vulnerabilities across, across three separate research satellites. So the problem with this is if you've got a satellite, maybe it's a government satellite, you know, doing some things that you don't necessarily want other people to know about. Um, <laughs> you know, so, you know, maybe Russians, you know, go in. It used to be we were worried about Ukrainians doing this, but <laughs> now they're yep. on our side. But because uh, Ukrainians are some of the best hackers in the world. Uh, but uh, now you've got Russians and Chinese that we got to worry about. And. And they can, you know, if you've got satellite vulnerabilities, they can go in and take over or at least see what you're seeing, uh, what the satellites are seeing, and, you know, basically have all those secrets. Uh, or maybe even take them over and make them unusable to you. And so, you know, maybe they'll block phone calls because, you know, most of our phone calls nowadays are, are through satellite. Uh, well, if they did it right, there's an encrypted connection between the satellite and the ground station. So... Or, or not. Maybe that was too much hassle. Maybe it was too expensive for licensing. And who would possibly want to do, you know, get into our, you know, what do I have to steal? No, we don't need to worry no, about security. Forget about that stuff. Uh, maybe the yes, encryption made things too slow, so they, they stopped doing that, too. <laughs> yep. I had a client I had a client a while back that was, uh, you know, was like, you know, um, 
we the we want encryption you know we want our vpn tunnel between the offices but the encryption level is a little bit too high so the connection between the offices is too slow and I'm like well i could drop it down like what's the lowest you can drop down and i said <laughs> i could drop down to 40 bit encryption but 40 bit encryption hasn't yes. been safe since the early 1990s are you yeah, sure after you like, sign this release yeah right <laughs> That's right. Are you sure you want to go down to 40 bit encryption? Uh, they're like, yeah, yeah, let's go to 40 bit encryption. I'm like, okay. So I go down to 40 bit encryption. Now, unrelated to that, they had a an administrator who had a super simple password and it got hacked. You know, nothing to do with encryption, but uh, that wasn't so, Star Wars, was it? No, that was a different one. They, yeah, that was another customer that did Star Wars. Uh, so they uh, took over this um, computer, and you know, again, if you have an IT department. I have no way of controlling things. I'm, you know, I get called to fix a problem, and I would go fix the problem, uh, but and I would make recommendations. Now, when you are the IT department, you know, like your some of your clients, they don't have anybody else. You are the IT department, right. so right. you and make I can all tell this them this is what we're going to do. Exactly, uh, but in this case, they had an IT department, so I didn't. You know, I couldn't make those decisions about what what the password, or, you know, minimum requirements would be. Uh, so of mm -hmm. course, this this knucklehead went ahead and, <laughs> and made it something really <laughs> simple, um, but. Uh, after that happened and they, they had ransomware and all that kind of stuff, we got them all restored and everything was fine. But, of course, the uh, it was a a uh, come to uh, whatever deity moment um, <laughs> that, and, and they said, well, we should get audited and, and it shouldn't be done by the IT department this time. <laughs> No, no it shouldn't. they should not do their own audits. Never have the IT department do your own. They were doing it prior to that. Uh, so yeah, everything's, everything's fine. Everything's yeah, it's all great. Uh, so they they had a third party, uh, you know, organization come in. I think they charged like thirty thousand dollars. It was a huge amount of money just to go in yeah. and, and run some vulnerability scans, both from the inside and from the outside. Now you can spend even more than that. I mean, that was pre you know COVID. Uh, now you could spend two, three times or even more than that for these things. The prices have really gone up. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we used to do some uh, pen testing for clients, and I don't think we charged enough. No, but back then, when we first started doing it, nobody was getting it done, so any dollar amount was too much. <laughs> that, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, why should I even bother with this? Exactly. And there was no cybersecurity insurance like there is now and all that kind of stuff. Right, so right. this company came in and they did their vulnerability scan and they said, hey, why are you using 40-bit VPN encryption? And they looking at me and it's like, well, that guy set it up. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I got the, I got the emails that say that you requested this and I recommended against it. And like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> so, so they were okay with it. Uh, and then we ended up... Um, you know, increasing it to the, the current standard, you know, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that, <laughs> it's, you, you've got a lot, of, as you mentioned, you know, just because security is available for satellites doesn't mean that people are going to use it. Yep. Yep. Did you know because today it's... is the anniversary, uh, maybe I'm off by a day, but I believe it's today, the anniversary of uh, Armstrong landing on, on the moon. Really? really? Yes, from uh, uh, 1969. So... 54 years ago, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Um, or was it 1970? I can't remember. I think no, I think it was 69. Uh, anyway, it was, a, a, I didn't remember this, but my sister had written a letter, like um, a dear diary kind of thing for that day. And she came mm -hmm. across it. Uh, I remember watching the, the landing, you know, the, you know, astronauts walking on the moon. I remember, you know, seeing that and all that. We were waiting for hours and hours for it. You know, we didn't know when it was going to happen and stuff. Uh, and then it finally happened. And uh, my sister wrote, you know, a Dear Diary thing, because it was a big day in human history, probably the biggest day in human history. <laughs> you know, it was huge. And uh, yep. uh, she wrote that I um, learned how to ride my bike that day. So it was a big day Ooh. for me, too. <laughs> That's right. For several reasons. How many people know the exact day and time they learned how to ride a bike? <laughs> I well, know. I didn't have anybody documenting mine. So yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I don't know when. I now know. I'm, I'm very, very excited. I remember learning how to ride a bike and how you know exciting it was and all that. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, now I know the day and time. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, pretty cool. 
Uh, let's see. And finally, we have uh, Microsoft Teams. So we like we love Microsoft Teams. You know, it's 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 great for security. It's great for conferencing. You can you know um, link in a lot of different applications. You know, for anybody who knows anything about security and conferencing and and all the new stuff, it blows away Zoom. It blows away every other you know conferencing application that's out there that I've ever seen. Yeah. And, have, you know, have, have you seen anything better out there? Define better. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of them out there. <laughs> more secure. Um, more secure. How's quite that? often you have to dumb it down to what the client has or what they need to know yeah. or what they know, know how to use. Yep. Um, and so Zoom is a good default there because, yeah, we have it installed. Yes, we have an account. Blah, blah, blah. It's super simple. Um, it's easy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So is Google Meet, which is what we're using right now. Uh, but Teams gives you, I mean, it is so much better for collaboration. It's such a... a oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The, the document sharing, um, being able to have multiple people work on an Excel document and update information all at the same time. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's really good. Um, so they made an interesting change this week. Um, it's their, their new feature saves you, Scott. And I know this is important to you. Saves you from having to put, up, put on makeup prior to a video conference. <laughs> Oh, that's going to save me hours every conference. So they teamed up with Maybelline to create software makeup. So let's say you're looking rough. You just got up. You brushed your hair as best you could. You haven't taken a shower yet, and it's time for your 6 a.m. meeting. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. Uh, but you're like, wait a minute. I don't have to pretty myself up because the Maybelline Beauty app is now available in Microsoft Teams. So just like you know, right now you're showing a fake background, right? Uh, and yep. and a lot of people do during during a, a Zoom or a, you know a no, Teams. No, look, that's not fake. That's that's well, that's, that's the view. Oh, that is your real view. Oh, I'm sorry, I, yeah. I totally messed up on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, those who do put up a, a fake you know background. Um, so now you can put a fake face uh, where it's well, I should say fake face. It's going to be your face, but it's going to be with makeup. Um, so yeah. I think that in a future, um, you know, podcast episode of the All Tech Radio Show, we should both do it in teams and use the Maybelline Beauty app to see how beautiful it can actually make us. I will get that plug-in installed. Maybe I can add more hair and stuff like that. Oh yeah, more. Oh, I'd love to have a mullet. You know, it's it's been there you go. It's been a while. Uh, <laughs> Robert in the seventies. Yeah, right. I parted, I parted my hair in the middle too. You know, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, we've come to the end of another fun and exciting Alltech Radio Show. I hope everybody learned a lot and had a good time. And if you're in your car listening on uh, listening to the podcast on your way to Seattle, Washington D.C., New York, or wherever. Keep your eyes on the road because I might be out there too and I don't want you to run into me. So thanks again <laughs> and we'll see you again next week.